that person for 500 naira. But it is said it is for 250 naira. So you can go to the usher stand for your change. Thank you. All pastors, wives, and lady ministers from Akuwonjo district are to gather at the back of the auditorium immediately after this morning session for an important task. So please don't go away. Praise the Lord. And as many of us that have still not written our prayer requests, please let us do that and let us drop them in the prayer basket. Praise God. And for question and answer, if you still have question and answer, we have a time for question and answer. Please write your question and give it to the usher. Praise God. Praise the Lord. There is this pair of glasses found if you are looking for your own with black frame. You can get it back from the usher, please. Then somebody is looking for a Bible black in color and the name on it is Dada AA from our missionary district. Please, if you find any of please return to the usher and you will get back to the owner. God bless you in Jesus' name. Um, welcome our mommy, Reverend Mrs. Ibidun, to the podium to anchor the next part of the program for today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's rise up and wave our hands and start to worship the name of the Lord. Rise up on your feet. Wave your hands to Jesus. Thank God for the person sitting beside you. Look at her face and say, I thank God for your life. Say it well. And what is the person saying? Smile again. I say, my sister, I thank God for your life. The Lord will preserve your life. You will live to eat the fruits of your labor. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen to that? Let's have a seat. I want to appreciate God in the life of our daddy, and uh, mommy, our daddy G.O., our mommy G.O., Reverend and Reverend Mrs. Sam and B.C. Aboyeji. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. They are the one who brought us here. Courtesy of daddy and mommy. I've been not be so. I will thank God for the way the Lord has been ministering to us. It's a powerful one. It's as if it will not hold. But look at it, mommy. Look at what the Lord has done. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. She's a woman of faith. A woman of prayer. A woman that is so diligent, persistent, persevere. Say, so this thing will hold and it's holding and look at the people this morning i could see many people coming in again somebody shout hallelujah and we thank god for our mommy that the lord has used for us our grandma in fact i just need to come here and say shout hallelujah and let me go and sit down because the lord has used you you are really met with the needs of all the mothers and wives here and I pray that you not lose your reward in Jesus' name. Once again, we cherish your coming. We cherish it and we appreciate you. You'll be more appreciated in Jesus' name. We thank God for this team. Thank God for all the board members present. Our whole mission director. Who always backing us up, praying for us. Leading us, guiding us, counseling us and teaching us. Thank God for our mommy, Rose Ojo, ministerial representative of the board. Thank you for our mommy, Kafilat, 
who is standing as our national director for education and all other board of directors present. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. My assignment is so simple. Let's open our Bible. It's managing crises in the church and home. Managing crises in the church and home. Let's rise up on our feet once again. Holon to tobi Holon ba bagba Holon to to you because you are our God you are our father our maker our creator you made us in your own image and you place us in the position that we are today as pastors wives lady minister as a woman as a mother as a sister father be ye glorified in the name of Jesus. The little time we'll be sharing with ourselves. Holy Ghost, take charge. Holy Ghost, take charge. Come against every spirit of destruction. Every spirit of buying and selling. We come against them in the name of Jesus. We release your anointing upon everyone here. And they hear your word. Father, we pray. That will help them, Lord, to be the doers of your word in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, I hide myself behind the cross of Calvary. And I release myself to the power of Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, ride on. Holy Ghost, ride on. That the climax of everything, your children will be blessed. Jesus, precious name, we are prayed. Managing crisis at home and in the church or vice versa what is crisis even before we go there when you look at the church and home it's not a mistake that we are given the topic of managing crisis in church and home when you look at the word of God, you will see that God so cherished home. That is the only thing that the church of God and Christ is being compared with. When you read the book of Ephesians chapter 5, it says, As the Lord cherished the church and loved the church, husbands should love their wives and as the church also pay reverence to Christ the wife also should reverence their husband you can see also that home is very important it's families that make the church of God when you go to the church you see families and as you are sitting there also you are representing a family and you are also representing the church of God. And I pray 
any crisis you may be facing in your local church, your zone or district, or in your family, the fire of Holy Ghost consume them in the name of Jesus. What is crisis? It has been described as an event that causes unstable situation and restlessness. It can also be an unexpected occasion that creates fear and threat. Crisis can lead to anxiety. It can lead to chaos. It can lead to separation. It can lead to emotional and psychological problem if not properly handled. Crisis had caused wife and husband to go on their separate way. Churches have gone through crisis. And churches are still going through crisis. First Square Gospel Church also, the organization we belong, we have passed through some crisis. And thank God that the Lord made us to pass through it and we are still standing. Somebody say, hallelujah. And some other churches are still going through it. The CAC are still going through crisis. Assemblies of God are still going through crisis. But it's our prayer today as a body of pastors, wives, and lady ministers that the Lord will put an end to their crisis in Jesus' name. Crisis. When you look at the Bible, the people of old also have gone through, uh, through their own crisis. In the old and in the new. When we get home, we can read all. Abraham went through crisis between him and Lot's had men. That is in the book of Genesis chapter 13. And God helped him. This same Abraham also had crisis between Sarah, Haggai, and himself. But thank God that Lord gave him the wisdom to settle the crisis. In the time of the apostles, they went through crisis. In the book of Acts chapter 6, the widows and the needy, they rose up that they are not being treated fairly. But thank God that Peter and John and other apostles rose up to that challenge and uh, they settled the crisis. Move ahead to the time of Paul and Barnabas when they are about to go to their missionary journey. There was a crisis between whether John Mark should follow them. There was a serious crisis. But thank God the Holy Ghost settled that crisis. I pray and prophesy that in any of our local church, district, houses, or region that we have crisis this morning, receive solution in Jesus' name. Receive solution in Jesus' name. How can it be managed? Because the topic is managing crisis. How can it be managed? Number one, when we look at our team, we will see that we all have parts in managing the crisis, whether in the church or at home. Nehemiah rose up to the crisis in his own time, say, I will arise and build. The woman in the book of Proverbs chapter 14 says, I am a wise woman. I am ready to build my house. And in the book of Proverbs 24 verse 3 and 4, it says, through wisdom, the house is built and by understanding is being established. It did not stop there. Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 
Verse 10. Say, I am a wise builder. And when you move ahead, in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18 to 19, Jesus Christ, our Lord, says, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. Every gate of hell in any of our local church or district, Holy Ghost fire consume them in the name of Jesus. How can we manage crisis? Or how can crisis be managed? Three things, quickly. We manage crisis by faith. We must apply faith. In the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4, Say the just shall live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in the word of God. That there is no crisis that the word of God cannot settle. Faith when there is crisis. Faith to go to the word of God. Faith to go to God in prayer. Faith to remember the name of Jesus the name that has been given unto us far, far above principalities and powers. We must have faith in that word that there is no mountain that will not become plain when we have faith in his word. Christ is in our home. Have faith that is God's purpose for you to be in that home and that no mountain will be able to stand. Faith is very important. Speak the word of faith. Command the word of faith. Decree the word of faith. Prophesy the word of faith. God told prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37. Say, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Maybe you are thinking that there is no hope for that crisis in your home. Maybe you have even tried everything possible and yet there is no end yet. Ezekiel told God, God, you are the one that can determine whether these bones can live or not. And the Lord told him, prophesy. God is talking to a daughter of Zion that that crisis that looks like a dry bone I prophesy and decree that thy bronze will live in the name of Jesus. That home is healed in the name of Jesus. That home receives life in the name of Jesus. Faith in the time of crisis. Number two, forgiveness. Forgiveness. We need to forgive one another. When we read our Lord's prayer in Matthew 6 12, say, Forgive us as we forgive our debtors. Do we forgive? Are we not holding grudges either in the church or at home? Don't we have people we will not even greet in the church? Don't we see people that we call our enemies? Because they are spoken against our husband. We need to forgive. If we don't want crisis again, we must have the spirit of forgiveness. There is no how we will not offend ourselves. Another says, the tongue and the teeth, they are very close, but they do bite themselves. Will you now remove the tongue? Or you remove the teeth? No. Within some time, you continue to chew what you are chewing. You will not even throw it away. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, learn to forgive and forget. Tell your neighbor, I don't know that person who has offended you. I don't know whether it's your children. I don't know whether it's your husband. 
I don't know whether it's a member in the church. I don't know whether it's the assistant minister working with your husband. But daughter of Zion, forgive and forget. May the Lord help us to forgive and forget in Jesus' name. How do we manage it? Number three, you have to fight. Tell your neighbor, you have to fight. You have to fight. I don't say go and uh, be boxing. The Bible says in the book of Second Timothy, First Timothy, verse 6, 11 to 12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. We need to fight it out. We need spiritual battle to manage crisis, spiritual battle. You have known this, that Satan is not happy that minister and the wife with the family, may the Satan, devil, is not happy that we are staying peacefully. In fact, they rejoice when we are quarreling. They rejoice when there is crisis in the home. It's a battle. And be ready to fight that battle. Don't you see what is happening? Marriage of one year. Divorce in our courts. Marriage of two years. Marriage of three years. That one's more. Marriage of 40 years. Why? Spiritual battle spiritual battle and that's why you need to fight there's one adage in our play that says of a toad it says if I will not make the soup to be sweet say I'm going to put my whole body inside that soup in Yoruba it says akereni toba korokio madube one takpa tese ou lo ma kosibe Fight! Tell your neighbor, fight! I can't hear you. Fight! You need to fight. It's a spiritual battle. And whom are we fighting? The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, it says we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against wicked people in high places. And the book of Second. Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3 to verse says, the weapon of our warfare are not canna, but they are mighty through God. Pull it down. Every stronghold. There are some strongholds in some churches. There are some strongholds in some homes. But this morning, at the Lord live it. I pull down every stronghold in the name of Jesus. That stronghold in that local church that is causing problems every time. That stronghold in that family that is making your husband not to see your face, that is making your husband to hate you, that is making people not to like your face. Right now, that stronghold, the Lord pulled them down in the name of Jesus. Be ready to fight. You must challenge your challenger. David challenged his challenger. And I pray as Goliath was not able to stand before David, that challenger in your home will not be able to stand in the name of Jesus. Fight with fasting. Fight with prayer. Fight with holiness. Fight with the power of the word. Go deep into the word. The solution is in the world, not from any other place. Quickly, what causes crisis? What is the cause? The Bible says in the book of John 10, 10, the enemy has come to do what? To steal, to do what? To kill, to do what? And to, and to, the cause of every crisis is the enemy. Satan. Another cause is sin. Another cause is self. There are some crises that are man-made. 
there are some crises that are devil made. And because you have known the cause, the solution is very close. What causes crisis? Disobedience to the word of God. Disobedience to the word of God. As a man of God, a pastor that refused to pay tithes will cause crisis in the church. And we have pastors who are not paying tithes. We have pastors' wives that are not paying tithes. If you are here, your husband is not paying tithes. You are not paying tithes. You want things to be tight for you. And you must repent. On this mountain, tell your neighbor, repent. Oh. Tell your neighbor, repent. If a pastor is not paying tight, it will cause crisis. Because when the members see it, they too will refuse to pay their tithe. Two, if a minister is fraudulent, it can cause crisis. If a minister is double tongue, pastor's wife double tongue, tell Biara, it can cause crisis in the church. We are a pastor, instead of blessing, is cursing. You may say, can a pastor curse? Yes, they are cursing. I've seen a pastor, even senior minister, cursing another minister. It's not a dream. It's not on the mountain. Openly. When a pastor will stand on the altar and start to curse his members, it will cause crisis. May the Lord forgive us. In any area we have brought crisis to the church of God, may the Lord forgive us in Jesus' name. Quickly. What is the cure? When there is church crisis, in the church, you must remember that we have three categories of people according to the word of God. We have the carnal person. We have the natural, the carnal, and the spiritual. When we get home, please let's read it. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, it tells us about the natural man. So the natural man can never understand the things of God. It's a taboo to him. In 1 Corinthians 3, 1 to 6, it tells us about the kind of man. The kind of man refused to grow. The kind of man will bring strife, will bring envy, division. I am for Apollos. I am for Paul. I am for senior pastor. I am for assistant minister. Kind of man. And we have the spiritual. But the spiritual are few. The spiritual things of spiritual thing. The spiritual have the fruit of the spirit. And for you to know that we need to know the type of people we are ministering to so that we know where the angle that crisis is coming from. And I pray that God will grant us the wisdom in Jesus' name. What brought church crisis? Misunderstanding misrepresentation, misinterpretation, mismanagement of people, and mismanagement of finance, lack of spiritual maturity, careless talk, lack of administrative skill, and so on and so forth. And uh, I just want to admonish us that as pastor's wife, we should not be the architect of crisis either at home or in the church. So that when they mention crisis, God forbid that you be mentioned as the cause. Hey, it's the pastor's wife. Hey, what happened? It's, it's, it's mommy. It's mommy that said this. It's mommy that have done that. It's mommy. It's mommy. You will not be a part of crisis in Jesus' name. Take, when there's crisis, let's take.
prompt action before it escalates. When it's crisis, let there be a call for discussion and know the facts about the crisis. When there is crisis and discussion cannot solve it, let there be a committee set up. And that committee that has been set up should be people of integrity. Just like Peter told the apostles, let's look for people of honest report. People of integrity that will not show any favoritism. That be able to say it the way God wants them to say it. So that that crisis will be needed in the world. And it will stop. It will not spread. It will not cause division in the church. And I pray that whosoever may want to be architect of crisis in the church, the power of God will deal with them in Jesus' name. Quickly, crisis in home. We have heard much about crisis in our home. We have the one that devil himself is the architect. And we have the one that uh, we cause by ourselves. The Bible says in the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, it says, our grape is tender. Tender. Our home is so tender. Carry your family like an egg. That if it just drop down, the thing will scatter. Start to see your home as something so precious. And carry it like that. So that the enemy will not be able to penetrate. Satanists are fighting tooth and nail. To bring down homes of Christians. And most especially ministers. Because we are disturbing them. They will not have a way in our homes in Jesus name. You must fight for your marriage. Fight for your marriage. You don't have another place to go. The day you are handed over to that uh, man. To that child of God. You don't have any place in your parents' house again. So, you must know that this is my home. I don't have any other home. Be ready to fight. Don't care. Say, I, I've been this married for many years. Satan is not at rest. God asked him, when he came to report Job, where are you from? Say, to and fro. I don't have a place. I'm just moving around to see if somebody will give me a chance to enter. When you are saying you are tired, when you are saying you are so old in marriage and you are not ready to defend that home, Satan will just come in. He will not have a way in our homes in Jesus' name. Be at alert. Tell your neighbor, be sensitive. Be sensitive. Be at alert. Defend your home. And the Lord will defend that home for you in Jesus' name. What always brought crisis in our homes? Failure to adjust. Failure to adjust. We still want to maintain who we are. Failure to admit our wrongs. Like our mommy have really dealt on that. And failure to adhere to our vows. The day you are wedded, you made some vows. I will love him. I will. Are you ready to take care? Yes, I will. In time of sickness, yes, I will. In time of this, yes, I will. Remember to adhere to that vow you made on that day. What also brought crisis? Effective communication. Lack of effective communication. You no, know, there are some women who cannot talk to their husband. They are so afraid of their husband. It's like cat and mouse. You know yourself. What brings crisis? Lack of family fellowship. Lack of family altar. Socioeconomic problem. That is financial problem. Delay in childbearing. I pray for as many that are here this morning, 
still expecting the fruits of the womb. This year, 2021, today is Friday, 10. Receive your children in Jesus' name. Receive your children in Jesus' name. It always brings crisis. The parents of the man will come. You cannot stay here and just be eating our food. Give us a child or we drive you out. They can advise the man, go and meet with another woman. Go and try whether she is at fault or you are at fault. I pray that the enemy will not have a way in that home. The Lord will bring you joy. Joy. Celebration. It's your turn in the name of Jesus. What brings crisis? Sickness. Sickness. Disease. When somebody is sick and they have been spending money carrying the person here and there, that will not be your portion. It will not be my portion. We go out. God will satisfy us and our husband and our children in the name of Jesus. What brings crisis? Sex. It has been dealt with. What brings crisis? external interference friends in-laws there are some in-laws that are difficult but God will grant you wisdom to tackle them in Jesus name but don't cause crisis for yourself tell your neighbor don't cause crisis for yourself understand your husband Know his weakness. Know his strong points. Don't cause crisis. Be available every time. Tell mama, be available every time. Be available every time. Also, be industrious. Don't be lazy. Be industrious. Lay your hands like the woman in Proverbs 31 from verse 10. It's very industrious. She provides food for her family. You must be industrious and the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. And if there's anyone here with no job, I pray for open door for you in Jesus' name. Also, be approachable and be beautiful. Tell your neighbor, be beautiful. Be beautiful. Don't be dirty at home. Mind what you wear at home. Wear beautiful dress at home. Have a see-through nightgown at home. Don't form the habit of tying rapper in the night. Don't form the habit of wearing pints when you want to sleep. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Don't cause crisis for yourself. Go and wear see-through. And as you are going to the bedroom, let him see you in a special way. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Be sensitive. Wash everything around you. Don't be too relaxed. Mama, sister, don't be too relaxed. It's not every woman that comes to the church that has come for salvation. It's not every woman that comes to the church that has come to be blessed. We have agents of the enemy in the church. And what is their aim? To bring down that man of God. It will not be our portion. Let's rise up on our feet. Now let's lift up our hands. You are here this morning. You are facing crisis in your home. You are tired of that home. You are tired. You are just managing so that people will not say, Ah, ah, and you also... But you are here. You have a heavy heart concerning your home. And you don't know what to do. You are there. 
you have a difficult husband oppressing you, intimidating you, I'm thinking of walking away from that marriage. Let all eyes be closed. I want you to lift up your hand. You have a problem in the home. You are crying every time. Secret cry. Secret cry. At times when you are in the church and your husband is speaking, you look at him. Say, is this same man? Abyss another man. Maybe they are just imported this man from overseas and you are not happy and you are here. Just lift up your hand. We have a few minutes more, but I cannot just go without ministering to you. You are there. Just move forward. We have our mommies on the mountain that will pray for you. Just move forward. You have a problem in your home. You have a crisis in your home. And you are weeping underneath. Just move out here. You are here. You have crisis in your church also. And as at now, there is no solution. And you are here. Please, I want you to rush out wherever you are. We want to minister to you. You have crisis in your church. And you have tried and tried and tried. No solution. People are leaving the church. They come in from the front door. They go out through the back door. And you want to say, God, enough is enough. That's why you are here. Just move to the front. We want to minister to you. I have a problem in the home. I have a crisis in the home. I am fed up. I am fed up. I cannot manage this man again. You are there. Your children are giving you problem. And you want to say, God, on this mountain, you must settle me. You must settle me. I want you to move forward. You are coming to the Lord who is able to give you rest of mind. Who is able to give you solution. Just move out here. Move out here. Mommy, our national president, I want you to please come and minister to those people. And our home mission also will pray for those who are having crisis in their church. Those who are having crisis in their church. Our mommy will pray for those who are having crisis in their home, in their family, and with their children. Thank you. <laughs> Begin to pray. There is nothing God cannot do. Even if the issue is as hard as stone, the Lord is going to resolve it. Oh. Our Heavenly Father, as many of you that are having crisis in your homes, difficult husband, difficult problems, crisis about the children, Father God, they have not come unto any human being, they have come to cry unto you upon this altar of solution. I stand by the authority in the name of Jesus. All those mountain of problem, let them begin to be resolved right now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy. I prophesy all those mountain of problem be resolved. Be resolved. Be resolved. Be resolved. In the name of Jesus. I want to tell you, you will hear instruction from the Lord. This is the way to go about it. Please be obedient to the word of the Lord. You have been hearing a lot. The Lord will speak to you. He's going to give you instruction on what to do. And when the Lord tells you this is what to do, please be obedient to that. I prophesy, whatsoever may be the problem, they will come back to give testimonies. Every husband 
that is hard, that is difficult, we subject them, even to the blood of Jesus, we subject them, even to destruction from above, whatsoever may be the character, the habit, Father, you will reveal yourself to them, and there will be solution, in the name of Jesus. Father in heaven, as many children uh, that are the problem of your handmaids that are kneeling there. Father God, let there be solution. As many children that have gone astray, draw them back home. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray because they have come forward to meet you, the mighty God, the one that has solution to every issue in life. Let their issues be resolved. Your issues are resolved. There will be joy. There will be happiness in your home. There will be gladness in your home. And you will go back and do greater exploit for the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let us pray. Just hold on, hold on, let's pray. Hold on, hold on. We are still praying. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. You are the great I am that I am. You said you will build your church and the gate of hell will not prevail. I decree that every gate of hell open up against any church that is being represented by any of this pastor's wife. We shut those gates of hell in the name of Jesus. Every means, every individual, every personality that is sent to scatter the gathering, we ask that the east wing of God will scatter them. Lord, are the problem in our churches, our personal making. I ask, open our eyes of understanding so that we will change the areas of life that we need to change in order to have the positive results that is designed by you in the name of Jesus. Let there be growth in that church. I, I, I say let there be growth in that church. I say let there be growth in that church. Let there be unity in that church. Let there be oneness in that church. Let there be progress in that church. As we rise from here, we'll go back to a different home. We shall see newness. And everything shall be different. Thank you, everlasting Father. As our mommy in the Lord has prophesied, it shall come to pass. Thank you for our mommy that you use, so God, you shall reveal her. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Please listen, listen. You may need counseling. You may need counseling. And if you need counseling, because you have come out, there may be some specific instruction that you need to follow. Please, you will do to see Mommy Ibidun and other people that, we, that she will invite alongside with her. Other, you know, experienced ministers. Please see them for counseling. Are you hearing me? So that they can counsel you. Just don't think it has finished, so, but there are specific instructions that you need to follow so that you will never experience crisis in your home and in your ministry anymore. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Please, if you need that kind of counseling, go straight. Straight to that place. You want to see Mama Ibido, another experienced minister. Please just go straight there. Straight there. Please, mommy, you can come out with other people so that when they, they can meet you there, so that they can see. They can. Let's pray for, please rise up. Let's pray for our mommy. Father God, we thank you. Okay. 
please mommy show the call our mommy dio for e for district will take the prayer for our mommy ibidu father in heaven we thank you thank you for our beloved mother in the book of titus chapter 2 verse 3 your instruction is that the aged women, the elderly women in the church, should be of good behaviors and teachers of good things. We thank you for this, our mommy that you have used to bless us this day, have fulfilled this scripture. Thank you for your grace upon her life to be an exemplary mother and elder in the house of God and thank you Jehovah because we trust that every word that have come out of her mouth to us the younger generation of women you will watch over them to perform it in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ and I prayed that mommy may grace continually be multiplied in your life in the name of jesus those of us that are coming behind you we're looking up to you as we are looking up to christ we pray that on no occasion will you fail the lord and on no occasion will we following you ever have regret following you because you are following christ in the name of jesus again and again May the Lord watch over all the prophetic declaration that you have declared over our lives, our families, our ministry to perform them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Father. Beyond that which we have asked, concerning our mommy, Ibidu, you will do to the glory and praise of your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. We want to take the offering, but before then, I want you to listen to this announcement. Mommy has announced that those who need counseling, especially those that came up, came up now, they have been directed to the right place, but similar to that, we were told to write our question yesterday. There was a session we had yesterday, and... Um, heart uh, questions, questions from the heart. So if you have any question bothering you from your heart, write down your questions, give it to the ushers. The ushers we give to these people, uh, our mommy, Reverend Mrs. Ibidu, and also Reverend Mrs. Tolu Abraham, Reverend Mrs. Anne Okereke, and Reverend Mrs. Folu Ade, Reverend Mrs. Folu Adewale, Ade Wumi, sorry. Okay, give your questions to the ushers. Ushers will give it to the protocol and it will get to the right place. Now we want to take the offering. How many of you are blessed? If you know you are blessed since this meeting started, rise up and give god a very big big clap let's do that rise up on your feet and give jesus a very big big clap put your hands together for jesus it has been glorious in fact i don't know how to describe it i've been so tre tremendously blessed and i know you are also blessed please choir our time is fast spent you have just 10 minutes please 10 minutes the lord bless you as you do that Sorry, the person taking the offering is uh, Pastor Mrs. Olushola Olaniyo. Please, if you are in the house, come up, please. Olushola Olaniyo. Mm -hmm. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am standing on the assisted protocol. Mommy, may the Lord keep you for us in Jesus' name. The Lord has been blessing us since we came in on Wednesday. And I know when you sow a seed, not only the person that is receiving that is being blessed, even you, you are going to be blessed. On that note, can we bring out our offering, a tangible offering unto the Lord as we rise on our feet? Shall we pray? Let's rise on our feet with our offering. It's another time to be blessed by the Lord. Whatever you give to the Lord this morning, shall I come back to you in multiple fold in Jesus' name. Let's rise. Please, daughters of Zion, let's rise on our feet as we pray. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you. We bless your name, Lord for the ways you have been blessing us since the beginning of this program, even for your blessings that we have received, even through the teachings of this morning. Lord, we have come to say thank you. With the talking in our hands, Lord, we ask and we pray, O oh Lord, that, Lord, you will accept these offerings in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, not only the offerings, Lord, you will accept our, our sacrifices of love, in the mighty name of Jesus, right? We pray for every hand that is being raised up now. Father, those hands will never wither away. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will bless the source of the offerings in our hands, and your name alone will be glorified forever. Thank you, Father, for prayer answered. For in Jesus' name, we are prayed. A louder amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hey, we Oh, no, 
Oh, you're 
director praise God I want you to rise up and give thanksgiving offering unto God on his behalf he has been here with us since the beginning of this program I know some of us we are just even joining yesterday some of us we started joining on Wednesday but he has been with us rise up and give God a round of applause on his behalf praise the Lord hallelujah by the grace of God, our own mission, Reverend Henry Obiala, will be coming forward even to give us the next ministration. I say the Lord bless you even as you come forth in Jesus' name. You are welcome, sir. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. The next person to give us the next talk is one of our directors and is the director of the home mission for the Foursquare organization in Nigeria. More than that, the pastor's wife and the lady minister of this organization is under his portfolio. I think you will clap your hands. Most of the support that we have been receiving is from under his department. So I have to come and introduce him specially because I, have, I need more support. So that is why you should join me and rise up and give plenty club to appreciate him for being here to come and give us the next talk. I want you to rise up. Everybody rise up as our vision director for Foursquare Organization Nigeria comes up to give us the next assignment. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Please celebrate my mommy. Uh, is that how you're going to clap for my mommy? If you're not going to clap well, let me drop the mic and be going. Praise the Lord. Please, can we be seated? You know, mommy made my assignment more difficult. She made the assignment more difficult. But I must appreciate the grace of God in the life of our mommy. Uh, if you have heard me introduce her, you hear me say, She's a woman of God, not only a pastor wife, but a great evangelist and a great minister. Celebrate her one more time. Mommy, thank you, ma. We love you. God bless you. I want to also appreciate all the escorts that have been working closely with our mommy. It has been a wonderful ride uh, these two, almost two years. God will also support you all in Jesus' name. Let me use this time one more time. Don't worry, I'm going to be brief or some of her. Uh, because I have seen that the timing, uh, we're already running behind schedule. So I will try my best possible not to use up to the time that I'm allotted to. I will not even use up to that time uh, to be clear with us. Uh, I want to thank God for the planning committee chairperson and her ESCO. I want to appreciate all our district of sales wife and all our pastor's wife and lady ministers. Thank you for coming to this program. It's a wonderful time seeing every one of us like this. God will continue to bless us, bless our homes, bless our ministries in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. 
you have a, my paper in the brochure. I'm just going to do something like a paraphrase of that paper and expect that you will read it when you get home. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this hour. We'll bless and exalt your holy name because you are God. You are wonderful. Ask that as we look at the pages of your scripture, you will please speak to us. Open our eyes. Challenge us. Deposit grace in our life and cause us to do what you want us to do. In Jesus' name we'll pray. You know, by the way, you know my wife is uh, one of my mommy's uh, right hand person. Eh? Thank, mommy, thank you for taking care of her eh, so that I can be able to eat when she comes back home tomorrow. <laughs> Today I'll be speaking with us on the topic I want to recoin, arise and build God's kingdom through evangelism. Arise and build God's kingdom through evangelism. You will agree with me that evangelism is the main trust of the church. Whatever we are doing, when we gather either two to three or millions, if it does not have an evangelical outlook, then we are not fulfilling the call, the ministry that God has given unto us. The work of evangelism is not given to a particular set of people in the church. The work of evangelism, thank you. All right. Uh, that's good. The work of evangelism is not assigned to either the pastor or the evangelist. Paul, speaking to Timothy, asked Timothy to do the work of an evangelist. So, and uh, Jesus Christ also called us to do the work of evangelist. So, I'm going to read two scriptures that I want to base our uh, discuss this morning, this afternoon on, and um, we will continue. Uh, in the discussion. Let's look at Matthew chapter 28. If you have your Bible with you, please open with me. Matthew 28, a very popular scripture that we have had to read from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Acts chapter 2. Act of the Apostle, chapter 2. Sorry, chapter 1, sorry. Act of the Apostle, chapter 1. Let's look at verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and all to the uttermost part of the earth. Uh, that is the assignment that we have been given to. In this decade of swearing, our attention has been drawn to the evangelical drive that we have in our different churches. Because each time from our own end, we look and we identify churches that are growing or that are not growing. And the reason why a church should or is not growing is because the evangelical drive the evangelical strength of that church is not working there is something that is fundamentally wrong in the evangelical drive i want to quickly ask us when last did you as an individual do the work of an evangelism the work of an evangelism when did you carry your bible and you hit the streets you hit the market you hit the bus or your home doing the work of an evangelist. I read, I heard a story of a, one of these uh, top ministers in Nigeria, a very, very big top minister in Nigeria, telling us that on a monthly basis, he rolled up his seat, he's a general overseer, he rolled up his sleeve and he goes to street for one-on-one -on -one evangelism. The question is, when last did you do that? Some of us are, have outgrown evangelism. Some of us, we just announced evangelism in our church and we are nowhere to be found. And you push out the children, you push out the youth, and we, as Mama Jo, we will sit back and we do nothing about the call 
on evangelism. Listen to me. It is not a case of a title. It's a case of the result that you bring before God as a child of God. When last did you do the work of an evangelism? So I'm going to be discussing this very, very fast. These two scriptures that we've read, and the third one would have been John chapter 3, verse 16, a very popular scripture. I'm going to be discussing them under five Ps. Everything that we have in that book, I'll be discussing them under five Ps. And uh, we're going to be looking at what is the product we are selling when we go on evangelism. What is the product? We'll also look at the price that have been paid for the products that we are selling. Then we'll look at the place. Where are we supposed to do this work of an evangelism? Then we'll move to the issue of promotion. How do we, what are the tools available for us to do this uh, work of evangelism? And finally, we'll look at the power that is available to do the work of evangelism. Number one, without wasting too much time, what is the product? What are we going out to evangelize? Several times, I listen to people that do morning cry and I ask myself, are these people actually preaching the gospel of Christ or what are they doing? The word evangelism simply is coined from the root word evangel. And evangel means good news. Good news. So if you are not presenting good news, you are not doing the work of evangelism. So, what is the product? The product that we are to sell, we are all marketer. Jesus said, don't you know that I have to be about my father's business? Evangelism is the business of the father. It is the business of God. And as a businessman and woman that you and I is, we need to identify our product. What is our product? John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. There is something he is giving. What is he giving? His only begotten son. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma. Anytime you go on evangelism and you don't preach Jesus, him crucified, Jesus, him resurrected, you have not done the work of an evangelist. We have just one product to sell. That is the product of Jesus. That is the product that we sell in first square. Jesus, only Savior. Jesus, baptizer. Jesus, healer. And Jesus, the soon coming king. Most time, we go out there. Instead of us to face the product we want to sell, we are selling other things. You see people go on evangelism sometimes, and they see somebody smoking. Instead of them to present Jesus Christ to the person smoking, they are there to face the subject of smoke. If that person buys your product, who is Christ, he will stop smoking. So instead of looking for other things, let's carry Jesus to the ends of the street. Let's take Jesus to them. Preach Jesus to them. Leave whatever they are doing. Present Jesus as it ought to. Present him in his co completeness. Don't just beat around the bush. One day I was driving. It was on a fast lane. Something that's supposed to be on a trunk B road. I've shared this testimony or this word with some people. And I saw somebody by the side of the express. Trunk B road, don't forget. And he was doing, I would, will I call it morning pray, morning, uh, uh, morning whatever, or he was preaching the gospel. And the cars were going, fiam, fiam. He was not with any megaphone. He was just shouting, repent. Repent. And I ask myself, who will hear what this person is saying? Sometimes we go on evangelism only to justify the fact that we have done evangelism. But we don't look at the effectiveness of the evangelism that we are, going to, we are having. By the time we get to promotion, you will see how to be effective about it. Number two, price. This Jesus that is our product, Jesus, God said, for God so loved the world that he gave. He's a free gift. Is everything about our salvation has been paid for. Jesus paid with his blood. Jesus paid with his blood. Even for the most sinful man on earth. And that is why there is nobody that cannot be saved. 
There is nobody that witchcraft, that babalawo, that man that you think just killed somebody now, 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 now. He's still under. If he can receive the mercy that Christ has brought, he will be saved. The price has been paid. The same way it is paid for you. And we need to carry this free gospel to everybody, everywhere, and every time. The price has been paid. So you, they don't need to pay anything. Sometimes we go out to preach to people, make it, putting a, upon them more burden. More burden. As if they have to pay the price for their salvation. No, that's not evangelism. Number three. If we know the product, that the product is Christ, if we know that the price has been paid, then where is the place for evangelism? Jesus said that we should go to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. Where is the place that you and I need to go with this gospel, this good news? Anywhere man is found. Anywhere man is found. Sir, ma, in your compound, as much as there is there's somebody that is not born again, you are a debtor to that person. Let's go to the brothel. Let's go to the street. Let's go anywhere man is found. To our villages, let's take the gospel there. To the campuses, let's take the gospel there. To the marketplace, let's take the gospel there. Don't ever think that all around you is saturated with Christian. I can bet with you that all around you is saturated with church goers. Not repented men and women. Please. You are sitting in the plane. Somebody sitting next to you. Preach the gospel to him. You are in a train, preach the gospel. You are in a, you are, you are, uh, in a boat, speed boat, preach the gospel. You are in a bus, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. That is the work of an evangelist. God brought you in contact with somebody so that you use that opportunity, that platform, to pass the message of Christ to that person. And that is the reason why we all need to rise and do the work of evangelism. You are buying vegetable in the market. Somebody is buying from your shade. There's nothing that stops you to hand over a tract with a smile. Jesus loves you. It's not until you make all the money in the whole world. Make all the money while passing the gospel. Make all the money and at the same time do what? Pass on the gospel. Do the work of an evangelism. D, number four. What are the promotional tools? What are the, the tools that is needed for this work of evangelism? In that handout, you have about almost 20 something tools that is there. In John chapter 10, verse 1, the Bible says Jesus Christ, in Luke chapter 10, verse 1, say, He gathered them, 70 of them, and He sent them out. How? Two by two. Two by two. So we have all types of manner, tools to do evangelism. Door to door kind of evangelism. Two by two. Medical and mission outreach. Outdoor crusades. Road shows. I want to thank God for one of our mommy, one of our district overseer wife. In the, one of the southwest districts. She, she retired from her place of work. And from the retirement money she got, she bought a land and built a church. That people in that area should hear the gospel. <laughs> Crusade! Crusade! The last big celebration you had, how many people gave their life to Christ? Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me, auntie. Until somebody in your party get to know Christ, that party is just eating and dining. Road shows, external ministry, market evangelism, boss evangelism, 
Both evangelism, school evangelism. You are involved going from one school or to other, making sure either primary school, secondary school, or tertiary institution, making sure they receive the gospel. Hospital evangelism. While I was preparing, I heard that word. Said most of us, some of us were involved in hospital ministration before, where God uses us to reach people, but now we are too busy. Busy doing what? The non essential. Why the essential is lying fallow? Hospital evangelism. Morning cry, I've said that. What about radio, TV, newspaper jingle, print and uh, print and electronic media? Using your WhatsApp to send message to people. Using your Facebook to send message to people. Making sure that you update people about Christ through your platform. Social media. Having some dynamic programs in your churches. Either you are having neighbor, uh, guest Sunday, neighbor Sunday, single program, all types of program, bringing people together for the sole purpose that you will sell the product. Don't forget the product. What is the product? What is the product? Jesus. You are doing all this just to sell the product. Don't forget that we are businessmen and women. And God is the chief CEO. And he will help us to become what he wants us to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, before we pray, because I want to see if I can spend three, two minutes for us to pray. What about the power of evangelism? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you'll be witnesses. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. If I ask us here in this place, how many of us are baptized with the Holy Ghost? I'm very, very sure that I will have about 90% of hands up. And I will ask this next question. How many of us are doing the work of witnessing? I might have less than 30% truly doing the work of witnessing. The Holy Ghost comes to energize us, releasing his power in us to do the work of evangelists. I tell people, you can never see, you, oh, don't let me put it like that. You will not see too much signs and wonder when all you do is sit in the coffers in the four wall of your church every day thinking you're doing the work of ministry. The only time you will see the power of God in action is when you hit the streets, the lanes, the crusade. God shows up through the power of the Holy Ghost. So, sirs and mas, you are not only baptized to speak in tongue. To speak in tongue is good. But the Holy Ghost comes upon us to energize us. To push us to do the work of evangelism. The Holy Ghost gives us the burning desire. Jeremiah said, when I decide not to speak of the Lord, it was like a fire shot in my bone. That's what the Holy Ghost come to do. That's what the Holy Ghost come to do. So I beg of us, let us allow the Holy Ghost to bring about revival in our life today so that we will rise from here and the Holy Ghost will push us continually to do the work of of mission to do the work of evangelism do you know how much good it would have been if every saturday mommy pastor say let us go to evangelism and she's the first person to get there every other person will be encouraged so if mommy can come out to do the work of evangelism i will come out you'll be shocked the following saturday if you started with three people today the following saturday they'll go and tell themselves mommy pastor was there he came, she came. Let us go to do the work of an evangelist. The power of evangelism. It is also the power of prayer. The power of prayer. How often do you pray about sinner being saved? A man of God cried and he said, Give me Scotland. Or I die. 
People prayed until you and I are here today. Who are we praying for? Who are we talking to God about? Yes, it's good for us to have a very good ambience, for us to clap, for us to sing, for us to praise God. But don't you think after that, it is better for us to step out and do the work. God is calling us this afternoon so that we should come back home, come back to our first love. The activities that we used to do that brought glory to God, we have soon abandoned them. The building we are building onto the glory of God, we don't have time for it. But we have time for partying. It's good to party. We have time to sit in the big chairs, exalted position, and God is shaking his head in heaven and saying, that is not the reason I saved you. That's not the reason I kept you. I kept you as a witness unto myself. I save you so that you can be a channel for salvation for other people. I ask us one more time. If Christ should come today and he asks you, how many people have you brought to me? What will you say? Zap, say, God, don't worry. I am an assistant to my husband. I follow my husband. And God will ask you, <laughs> is that all about your salvation? It's time for us to look into our life again and ask ourselves, the activities I'm doing presently, how does he add to the church? Or how does he add to the kingdom of heaven. The activities I'm involved. How does he bring souls to the kingdom? It's time for us to all rise and go back to the subject of soul winning. We have played along. We have left the most important thing. Going for non-essential. We celebrate. God keep blessing us. It's true. Why is so that somebody, somewhere, will see of what God is doing through your lips and surrender his life to God. Are there people here that this afternoon that will be like Ruth? Are there people here that will be like Deborah? Are there people here that will be like Aquila and Priscilla? Are there people here this afternoon that will reach out and allow God to fill them again and allow the Spirit of God to come upon them again so that the fire of evangelism will burn afresh? The fire and the passion of evangelism will burn afresh. You are building your house while leaving the house of God. Um, built. Let us rise on our feet. Let us rise on our feet. Let us rise on our feet. We have the product. What are you doing with the product? Serious price was paid for that product and was handed over to you. What are you doing with it? There are places that the gospel have not reached. What are you doing? You have a lot of promotional tools in your hand. Are you using any of them? The power of the Holy Ghost is in you. You can speak in tongue. But what result is that tongue giving you in so winning? Why don't you pray say, Holy Spirit, please release upon me fresh grace and fresh fire. Let's talk to him this morning, this afternoon and say, Lord, I come to you. For revival one more time. I want a revival of that which is important. Of that which is important. Talk to God this morning, this afternoon, wherever you may be. It's a serious issue. 
we cannot just wave it, wave it off. It's a serious issue. You are asking why is your church not growing? And I'm asking why you're not doing evangelism. <laughs> Talk to God. Lord, revive me. Revive me. Let the passion of the Holy Ghost, passion for soul winning, let it come upon me again. Passion for soul winning, let it come upon me again. I want to arise and build your kingdom through evangelism. I want to arise and build your kingdom through evangelism. Jesus help me. Jesus help me. Please, wherever you may be, if you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, can we just pray in the Holy Ghost? The next two, three minutes, let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Can I hear your voice loud and clear? Let's just pray in tongues. Let's pray in tongues. Let's pray in tongues. Use your prayer tongues now. Use your prayer language now. Use your prayer language now. Use your prayer language now until there's an endowment of the Spirit. Go spray tongues, spray tongues, spray tongues. Let it well from your being. Speak it until you use your prayer language. Somebody pray tongues, pray tongues. Speak to him. Exchange your weakness for his strength. Ribakata yeli prahandaya. Mazanda yele gede re prade bala prada baba baba. Jaka teke pasanta le bahandaya. Imbrende be gede bo. Zagaboro shandaya. Mambrende handaya la prakata ya. Lembe le prala prada baka sente le prahandaya. Lepa shate le bahandaya. Imbakata la prada baka soto le prade bashandaya. Brain tongues please. Brain tongues. Just spend one minute. Brain tongues. I'm about dropping this mic. Just pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Let that be revival. Let that passion come back. Let the zeal come back. Let that passion come back. Father, I ask, O oh God, that there be a revival in the house. I ask, O oh God, that you open our eyes of understanding to see what you want us to do. I ask that you breathe upon us the breath of life. I ask that, oh God, that there be an impartation here this morning. I ask, oh God, that there will be an awakening here this morning. I ask, oh God, that you redirect our mind, our consciousness, and our ability in you. Thank you, Father. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. souls to rescue there are souls to save send the light send the light send the light the blessed gospel light let it shine we thank you for this renewal of our mandate thank you for calling our attention to those things the business of the church the business of soul winning we pray that as we leave this place going forward you make us light bearers in the name of Jesus we pray that in our marketplace and everywhere we go, anywhere man is found, Lord, help us to bear your light in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the man of God that you have bring, you brought our way this afternoon, even to charge us and to open our eyes on the need to go out there for the lost. We pray that the Lord will embrace you the more. We pray that as you go forth, also bearing the light of God, the light of God in you will never go quenched in the name of Jesus. It will never be dim in the name of Jesus. 
the Lord will keep you. His grace will sustain you in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with your family. Father, Lord, we thank you. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' name, we pray. A round of applause. A round of applause, please. Thank you, sir. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We want to thank God because leadership is by example. By the grace of God, on Monday, our mommy Gio led a lot of us that were around to do evangelism in the neighborhood. And we know it was a beautiful encounter. And going forward, the Lord will continually help all our pastors and lady ministers to do the needful in the name of Jesus. When we were in the university, there were some courses that were titled compulsory, some other ones elective. You and I know that the business of the church is so willing and it is compulsory. As we rise from this conference, we will go and do the compulsory work in the name of Jesus. And the Lord will give us great harvest in Jesus' name. I did not hear your amen. Hallelujah. To take the next session of ministration is a beloved woman of God. This woman is amiable. This woman is godly. She's coming to tell us a few things about her portfolio or her ministry in connection with us. We all know that before we became pastor's wives and lady ministers, we are first of all a woman. The position we are holding is not stopping us from networking and working closely with the women in the church. And so this afternoon, the Lord has brought our way a mom and a grandma. She's very courteous. Anytime she sees me, she says, Yahweh Gami. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. She's a woman full of grace. This afternoon, please welcome with me. Please welcome with me. Dickiness Bemi Ajayi, the national president of Foursquare Gospel of Foursquare Women International. The last encounter I had with her was with wonderful God. I thought you would clap more than that. Hallelujah. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. Women in the house, shout hallelujah. Okay, maybe I didn't say it very well. Um, our pastor's wife and lady ministers in the house, will you shout hallelujah? Because of our time, I don't have much time. I want to appreciate our mommy in the Lord for this great opportunity she has given unto me and unto us as a first queer women international. I want to thank our daddy in absentia. I want to thank the committee members for even putting it before her and for her to approve me and for daddy to say it is well. And I want to thank 